What does this mean for Miami? Well, for Miami, it's huge. Miami is a, a big immigrant community, a big uh, soccer-loving community. And as opposed to other sort of pockets of the United States, I think in Miami, you've got people who grew up with the game, who've loved the game basically from the moment they could walk. We've got fathers throwing balls at their kids, at their sons and daughters, uh, from the moment they could stand up on their own two feet. So uh, it's about time. The, the fact that uh, David Beckman and company are bringing a, a Major League Soccer club here as well, it just sort of lines up perfectly. The stars are aligned beautifully in terms of the, uh, the timing for uh, soccer to explode in South Florida to levels maybe we hadn't seen before. We saw how the 94 World Cup was sort of a jump start to, to football, to soccer in the United States. Um, I think that's going to be the case once more, and maybe Miami is one of those places where it's a little more heightened because of our, uh, our population. Having a soccer mind, covering soccer on a, day, on a daily basis, basically, how do you put your mind around something that's a, from us eight years? But Right. How how are we so excited about this? Well, I, I, it's an exciting time. I, I don't think there's any other reaction you can have. Actually, we could be a little bit cynical if we wanted to with the way that FIFA works at times, with the way that U.S. soccer works at times. But I'll tell you, me personally, the first place I went was I have a one-year-old son at home. He'll be nine years old when this World Cup comes around. And that just lit up my morning, the idea of taking him to not just to a World Cup because we could travel and go to a World Cup, but a World Cup on home soil where we, we expect the United States to be there as opposed to, to this time around. Um, I think there's there's fathers and mothers like me all over the, the, the United States and Canada and Mexico who are excited to do that. Mexico hasn't hosted since 86, uh, the U.S. since 94. Canada's never hosted. And in some ways, this could be a bigger deal or as big a deal for Canada as for anybody else. What it, what it will it be like to ha when the games do start in eight years? Just to, I mean, we've had the Real Madrid's, the Barcelona's, yeah. but to have a World Cup venue and games here, what is that going to be? What is the city going to be like it, at that time? It's almost uh, indescribable because we've seen how positive the reaction has been when Barcelona come to play here, when Real Madrid come to play here. Uh, those are glorified exhibition games. These are international uh, friendlies that, that don't mean a whole lot and yet the passion is there. People are starved in this city for that elite level of soccer and I'm going way beyond Major League Soccer, NASL, the things that we have had for a while and you can't describe it. You can only feel it when you get there. You obviously have the community with the Argentinians, Colombians, Mexicans. This community is full with every country. And to have it here, what is that going to be like for all those people from those countries? We are sort of a microcosm of the continent. And so it, it's fitting that this is essentially a continent hosting the World Cup. You know, three of the, the three biggest nations in the CONCACAF region, three different languages are spoken. That sounds a lot like just taking a normal stroll down uh, the street of Miami on any given day. So I, I think Miami in particular can be a uh, sort of glowing symbol of what you know, the World Cup is like in the United States. Ray talked about it, what this does for Beckham's group. It's almost like a kick or a boost, yeah. as you could say it, to get the ball rolling, maybe catch some momentum, some fire, uh, announce the team name, maybe the venue, yeah. just uh, where they'll play their games. I, I hope so. Uh, uh, soccer's made tremendous strides in the United States you know, from 94, 96 when MLS launched uh, and moving forward. I hope that we have the infrastructure in place, and I don't mean just in terms of stadiums and getting around and whatnot. I mean incentivizing lower division clubs mm -hmm. to have a path toward the top flight, to have a way to, to, to monetize their product, because it's, it's a country of 300 plus million people and 20 top flight clubs, even if you expanded to 40 top, top flight clubs, for me is not enough. If you look at the proper soccer nations anywhere on the planet, they have a competitive advantage in that they've got every town, every nook and cranny of the country working toward getting to the elite level of that football. I hope that this will lead us in that direction.